Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about the Unholy Trinity. Who are they? False Prophet, the Dragon, and the Antichrist. Let's start with False Prophet, the easy part. I do believe without a single doubt, the False Prophet here is Prophet Muhammad. Why not Guru Nana? He's a false prophet. Why not Siddhartha Gautama? He's a false prophet. Because Prophet Muhammad is the false prophet who paved the way for the coming of the dragon and the Antichrist. Just like John the Baptist, paving the way for the Messiah to come. Before we go to the, the other two, the Antichrist and the dragon, I want to show you a couple of hadith that show the power of Jesus. And yet, Muslims fail to understand the hadith. We start with hadith um, from Al-Bukhari, number 3448. Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's, Allah's messenger said, By him in whose hands my soul is, surely the Son of Mary will soon descend amongst you and will judge mankind justly. He will break the cross and kill the pigs and there will be no jizya. Money will be in abundance so that nobody will accept it. I will stop there. Muslims will tell you, yeah, Jesus will judge. Like a judge in a court. No. Judges in courts have a very limited power. Why? Doesn't matter how justly of a judge you are in Ireland, you cannot go to China and judge people there. Doesn't matter how great of a judge you are in England, you cannot come to Indonesia and judge people there. You, can, you, you cannot just be a judge in Thailand and then go to Norway and become a judge there. Doesn't matter how good you are, how much experience you have, and how justly you are. You simply have boundaries and limitation. But judging mankind is another level. It is a job for God and only God can do. Therefore, this hadith is actually saying Jesus is God. He will break the cross. Muslims misunderstand about the cross. They do not understand what is the cross. The cross doesn't matter which cross, doesn't matter it has Jesus on it or without Jesus, is a reminder for us about pain, suffering, and death. And yet, it is also symbolizes hope. When Jesus comes back the second time, He will defeat the Antichrist and Satan. And then there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, no more death. And if what we are hoping for is here, who are we, we are waiting for is here, then do we need hope? No, no need to hope anymore. Because the one we hope for is already here. So the cross will be broken. Kill the pigs. When the cross is broken, when the Antichrist and Satan defeated, God will be united with the church. And it will be like a wedding feast. I hope you like barbecue pork as much as I do. 
there will be no gist here. Of course, that's wrong to begin with anyway. Money will be abundance, so nobody will accept. Well, Islam seems to talk about sex and money a lot. I don't know why. Um, everybody will have enough after Jesus defeat, defeats the Antichrist and Satan. Who needs money? Nobody. But I will show you where the money is abundance according to Islam. Later on. Now, let's go to the second hadith that shows the power of Jesus. We will read from here. I'm sorry. From here. Every disbeliever who smells the fragrance of his breath will die, and his breath will reach as far as his eyes can see. So, can you can you imagine the power of Jesus? His breath can kill disbelievers. Imagine if he's standing on top of Sien Tower. How far can he see? And then, that's how far his breath will reach. Can you imagine how many people will die? So Jesus is very, very powerful. But again, Muslims do not understand this hadith at all. They just refuse. I don't believe they see the way we see. The way we see it, but they refuse to believe that. Because the Quran keep feeding them with Isa, son of Maryam, Isa, son of Maryam. So they keep thinking Jesus is a creation. Jesus is like a human. Like us. Jesus, son of Mary. Jesus, son of Mary. This is what, what we should <laughs> take a look. You know, why, why Allah keep talking like this? This is weird. Have you, have you ever read in Quran that says, Musa, son of Imran? No. Allah doesn't talk like that. Musa, wow. Oh, Musa, son of Imran. Never talk like that. Or Muhammad, son of Abdullah. No. Why, why keep emphasizing that Jesus is son of Mary? Because it is the effort of Islam to make Jesus as human as possible. To lower down the importance and the power and the authority of Jesus. To erase the divinity of Jesus. And not only that, they will talk about a Mahdi. And the Mahdi will be higher than Jesus. Let us take a look. First, we will read about how where the Mahdi come from. This is from Abu Dawud, hadith number 4282, narrated Abdullah ibn Masud. The Prophet said, if only one day of this would remain, Allah would lengthen that day, till he raised up in it a man who belongs to me or to my family, whose father's name is the same as my father's, who will fill the earth with equity and justice, as it has been filled with oppression and tyranny. The world will not pass away before the Arabs are ruled by a man of my family, whose name will be the same as mine. So again, they keep saying Muhammad is the seal of the Prophet. So the most important. And 
They keep saying Muhammad is the best of our creations. Now, they say, Islam says, the world will not pass away before the Arabs are ruled by a man of his family, whose name also Muhammad. Can you believe this? And of course, this hadith is also silly at the same time. If you go to any country, Indonesia or Bangladesh, how many Muhammads there? Or in Middle East, how many Muhammads are there? How many Muhammads whose father's name is Abdullah? Many millions. Millions of them. Everybody is Muhammad, everybody is Abdullah. And like I said earlier, they put Mahdi, even Mahdi, more important than Jesus. Take a look at this. Sahih Muslim 156. Jabir bin Abdullah reported. I heard the messenger of Allah say, since a section of my people will not cease fighting for the truth and will prevail till the day of resurrection. He said Jesus, son of Mary, will, would then descend and their commander would invite him to come and lead them in prayer. But he would say, no, some amongst you are commanders of our son. This is the honor from Allah for this Ummah. So actually, here, what it meant, it means is, Jesus refused to lead a prayer. He left the spot for the Mahdi. Which is strange. And pay attention to this part, right? A section of my people will not cease fighting for the truth and will prevail till the day of resurrection. So they will keep fighting until the day of resurrection. So if you see ISIS, Taliban, they will never cease stop fighting. Even the Taliban, after they got Afghanistan back, after the USA left, after the Americans left, you think they should have peace? Nope. They have fight against the Iran, Iranians. They had skirmish several months ago. Only a few people died, but still. And now they have fight with ISIS. Well, not just now. This has been going on for quite a while now. Why they fight? A Muslim at work asked me, why they fight? They are the same East Muslims. They are both Sunni. Yes. But they are preparing the way for their Mahdi. Taliban's version of Mahdi is not the same as ISIS. ISIS has a very different version of Mahdi compared to Taliban. And also, of course, Abu Sayyaf, Boko Haram, they're all different. Al Shabab. They all have a very different version of Mahdi. That's why they don't actually like each other. Mahdi, according to Islam, Mahdi will rule for seven years. Let us take a look. Narid Abu Sayyid al Qudri. This is from Abu Dawud, 4285. The Prophet said, The Mahdi will be of my stock, my people, and will have a broad forehead, a prominent nose. He will fill the earth with equity and justice, as it was filled with oppression and tyranny. And he will rule for seven years. Now, keep that number in mind. Seven years. Mahdi will establish Islam too. Let me show you. This is, I do understand, the great is Da'if. But 
Da'if doesn't mean fake. It just means weak. Let's say, uh, uh, let me explain about Da'if Hadith. Let's say there are 10 narrators. Let's say this is, this had, one Hadith has, is a, it, this is a chain narration, you know. Let's say from 10 people. One of them is a liar. So, one, when it's like that, I don't know how Muslim say this one of the narrators is a liar. I don't know where they got it from. But when they see something like that, they believe the hadith become daif or weak. Again, not fake, weak. Because one of the narrators is a liar. But I don't believe. I don't believe that can make a hadith ta'if, actually. You know why? Unless if the liar is the first narrator, then the, the hadith will be fake. But if the liar is the second or the third or the fourth nar narrator in the chain of na narrators, then the, the, the hadith will be a sahih hadith. Because the other nine are not liars. So that's impossible. Maybe I will explain this in a very different video next time. But first, let's go back to this. Sunan Abu Dawud, hadith number 4286. We will start be we will start reading from here. He will divide the property and will govern the people with the sunnah of the prophet and establish Islam on earth. He will remain for seven years, then die, and the Muslims will pray over him. Over him. Abu Dawud said. Some transmitted of from Hisham nine years and some seven years. So the Mahdi will establish Islam and will make people follow the Sunnah. Now this is very dangerous here. We must be careful because I do believe. The scenario, what is the scenario for the, the end of the, the world? For the end of th time? For Judgment Day? Before Judgment Day, when, when the Antichrist will come, I do believe the Christians will, will fight the Muslims. That's what I do believe. You will understand why at the end of this video. Let us continue. And the prosperity. Islam also teaching uh, teaches that Mahdi will bring prosperity. Let us take a look from this. Sunan Ibn Majah, 4083. The uh, narrative from Said al-Qudri. That the Prophet said, The Mahdi will be among my nation if he lives for a ship of a short period, it will be seven. If he lives for a long period, it will be nine. During which my nation will enjoy a time of ease, such as it has never enjoyed. The land will bring forth its yield and will not hold back anything. The wealth at the time will be piled up. A man will stand up and, and say, Oh Mahdi, give me. He will say, Take. So when Mahdi is here, if someone asks the Mahdi, please give me something, give me this, the Mahdi just will just give him. Again, remember the hadith earlier, money will be in abundance. That's not talking about money, money after Judgment Day, obviously. Just talking about the money before Judgment Day, 
when the Antichrist is here, when the Mahdi is here. Now you see where I'm going with this? The Mahdi in Islam is the Antichrist in the Bible. Why? Now I will show you why. Remember, the Mahdi will rule for seven years. Let's go to Daniel. The book of Daniel. Chapter 9, verse 27. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. So the Antichrist, according to Daniel, Prophet Daniel, will have a will make a covenant for seven years. However, after three and a half years, he will change. He will he will not honor the covenant anymore. Instead, it will be abomination that causes desolation. So from prosperity to poverty, obviously. Now, let's go to the next the next one I want to show how I will I want to show you who who is the dragon I just show you who is the Mahdi Mahdi is the Antichrist now we know who the false prophet is and who the Mahdi is or the Antichrist is I want to remind you who the dragon is. Revelation 12 verse 9. The, the great dragon was hurled down and then the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the world astray. He was hurled to, to earth and his angels with him. Let me show you one more. Revelation 20 verse 2. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. So, keep this in mind. The dragon is actually the ancient serpent. The ancient serpent. Who deceived Eve? The dragon is Satan. Who deceived Eve. The dragon and Satan is one persona here. Now let's go next. I want to show you the next the next one where Satan or the dragon will call out a beast out of the sea. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. Let us read together. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It has ten horns and seven heads, and with ten crowns on its horns. And on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. I will just stop there for now. So, the beast from the sea will have power from Satan himself. Satan mislead people. He wanted to be higher than God. But he knows he cannot do it. His goal is just to deceive as many as he can by raising up a beast out of the sea is another way, one of the ways to do so. 
because let's continue with uh, with the reading one of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound but the fatal wound w- had been healed the whole world w- was filled with wonder and followed the beast people worshiped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast and they also worshiped the beast and asked who is like the beast who can wage war against it the beast was given out a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 months so for three and a half years the beast will come out from the sea and people will worship the beast and the dragon satan who gave the power to the beast and the second beast Let us continue the reading. The second beast. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. And he had, this is the, the first beast. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast. And the image of the beast should, should both speak. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed the second beast from the earth will come and give life to the first beast not even the first beast this is the image of the beast only the image so it could be a sculpture it could be a painting And interestingly, the first beast, I do believe, is mentioned in Hadith. Jami at Trimidi, Hadith number 961. Ibn Abu As narrated that the message of Allah said about the black stone by Allah, Allah will raise it on the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and a tongue that it speaks with. And testifying to who, whoever touched it in truth. The black stone in Maka, in Kaaba, will have eyes and mouth. So it can see and speak. Just like the image of the beast in Revelation 13, verse 15. Give life unto the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and kill. Kill people who do not worship the image. So now, people worshiping worshiping Satan worshiping the beast that comes out of the sea and worshiping even the image of the beast that comes out from the sea. The, the first beast is the black stone. The false prophet is Muhammad. The Antichrist is the Mahdi. And I don't know if you watch my my other videos. I talk about how Jibril is actually Satan himself. That's why in the cave, Jibril came to Muhammad. What kind of angel came only in the cave have you ever read any prophet in the bible met an angel in a cave have you met have you ever ever read about a prophet who met an angel and then the prophet tried to kill himself 
Have you ever read about a prophet who was hurt by an angel? There's no no such thing. Even even Mary, when the the angel came to Mary, proclaiming the good news. Mary was surprised because Mary was alone and suddenly an angel came. She was surprised. She was startled. But the angel will... What did, what did, what did the angel do? The angel said, Shalom, peace. And right away, she calmed down. No, no prophet trying to kill himself except Muhammad. So now, from these videos, we get them all. First prophet is Prophet Muhammad. The first beast is the black stone. Jibril is Satan. And the Antichrist is the Mahdi. And if you have any question, please send me a text or say something in comment. Put it in the comment, I will answer you. Anyway, that's all from me for tonight. Thank you for listening and watching. Whether you're Muslim or a Christian, God bless you all. Have a nice life.